Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss very important and typical type of questions on waves from March 2021, paper 1-2. These questions are very important to understand waves. For question number 21, it is given to us a progressive radio wave in a vacuum has a frequency of 75 megahertz. We need to find out what is the phase difference between two points on the wave that are 50 centimeters apart from each other. We need to find the phase difference between two points. And the distance between two points is given to us. It is given to us, this is a progressive radio wave. So simply we can say this is electromagnetic waves. And all electromagnetic waves, EM waves, they travel at the same speed in vacuum or in air. So for electromagnetic waves, this is very important point you need to understand. For all electromagnetic waves, their speed in air or their speed in vacuum is the same. And that is equal to speed of light means 3.0 times 10 to 8 meters per second. Very important point. You need to remember this one because this you need for some calculations. Next thing we need to understand how we can find out the wavelength and wavelength simply is equal to speed of wave in medium divided by the frequency of the wave. Speed is 3.0 times 10 to 8 meters per second and the frequency of radio wave is given that is 75 megahertz or we can say this is 75 times 10 to 6 hertz if we solve this one we can calculate value of lambda lambda in this case will be equal to 4 meters now we need to understand how to find the phase difference in order to find phase difference we need to understand the ratio between distance over lambda means the wavelength this is equal to the phase difference divided by means it is equal to the ratio between phase difference and 360 degrees means angle of a circle total angle in a circle now distance is given to us between points and that distance is 0 0.50 mean this is 50 centimeters we need to divide by lambda and then we can find out phase difference so this relationship is very important you need to understand this one I means the ratio is the same ratio between distance and wavelength is the same as ratio between phase difference and 360 now from here we can find out the phase difference and phase difference simply decide we need to multiply with 360 and our final answer for this one will be equal to 45 degrees this is how we can calculate phase difference this is how we can calculate phase difference sometimes distance will not be given to you the time will be given to you and then you can write down the ratio between time the given time over time period t here this will be the given time so this ratio is also true given time time will be given to you and time period so this capital t is the time period so another one sometimes time will be given to you sometimes distance will be given to you but t over capital t a distance over wavelength this is equal to phase difference over theory 60 this is how you can calculate so our answer for this question is b and this is the answer for question number 22 we need to find out which statement is correct for longitudinal waves but not correct for transverse waves it simply means that which statement is true for longitudinal waves only but that is not true for transverse wave in order to answer this question first of all let's get one small table in this column we have longitudinal waves and this, in this column let's say we have transfer waves for option a we can write down here for option b we can use this one and for option d we will write here now we need to find out which statement is true for longitudinal but that is not true for transverse waves that if you look at option a it is given to us they can form stationary waves so both waves means transverse and longitudinal they can form stationary waves so this is true for both of them if we go to option b it is given to us they can only travel through a medium that is 100 percent true for longitudinal waves 
that this is not true for transverse waves because transverse waves they can travel through vacuum as well means they can travel without medium they can travel through vacuum and they can also travel through medium so option b is true for longitudinal waves I mean it is correct for longitudinal waves but it is not correct for transverse waves so the answer is b now if we go to c they can transfer energy in direction of travels and they are transverse wave means they are progressive waves longitudinal wave transverse wave they are progressive waves so they can transfer energy so this is true for both of them they consist of peaks and trough. This is true for transverse waves. That this is also true for longitudinal waves. So peaks in terms of longitudinal waves simply means that high pressure. So they also consist of peaks means high pressure. And trough for longitudinal waves simply means that low pressure. So this option means this statement is also true for longitudinal wave. So our answer is B. For this question, it is given to us a loudspeaker emitting a sound wave of single frequency is placed a distance capital L from reflecting surface. So loudspeaker is placed here and it is at a distance capital L from reflector from reflecting surface. A station wave is formed with an antinode at the loudspeaker means at this point we have antinode antinode is formed at loudspeaker so this is given to us antinode is formed here at loudspeaker this is one important point the microphone is moved from the loudspeaker to the reflector so we have microphone that is moved from this loudspeaker to the reflector before the microphone reaches the reflector means before reaching it detects four points where the sound intensity is minimum four points here intensity is minimum it means it's simply telling us that there are four nodes so there are four nodes that it is also given to us it detects where the sound intensity is minimum before the microphone reaches the reflector so this is very important so means we have four nodes from this point to somewhere here there are four nodes before this microphone reaches the reflector now in order to answer this one we need to sketch the wave first of all if we can sketch the wave it will be very easy for us to see and also we need to understand on this reflector there will be an other node it means there will be five nodes in total so let's sketch first of all if we sketch our wave so this is how you need to sketch now you can see here it was given to us there is an anti-node at loudspeaker so this one is our anti-node then there are four nodes so you can see these are four nodes before microphone reaches the reflector so we have four nodes so this one is node this one is node so here is node and this is also node that there is also one node here so this is the point you need to understand there is a node at the reflector and this is the fifth one now we need to understand the distance between any two consecutive nodes are antinodes this distance is equal to lambda by two or we can also say that the distance between any two consecutive nodes are antinodes this is equal to lambda by 4 and you can see from here now so this distance this also will be equal to lambda by 4 and next distance this also will be equal to lambda by 4 and distance between next antinode and node this distance also will be equal to lambda by 4 and between next node and antinode this distance is also lambda by 4 and you can keep on writing this is lambda by 4 so here also this distance will be lambda by 4 and next one this also distance will be lambda by 4 and the last one this distance also lambda by 4 now simply we need to count how many lambda by 4 so this is 1 this is 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so in this case l is equal to 9 lambda by 4 so simply we can write down like this question is asking us we need to find out 
wavelength means we simply we need to find out lambda so in this case lambda will be equal to 4 l divided by 9 and this is what question is asking us to calculate so the answer for this question is c that's the answer so the main concept what you need to take away from this question is that the distance between any two consecutive antinodes and node that distance is equal to lambda by 4 and the second concept you need from this question is the distance between any two consecutive nodes or antinodes is equal to lambda by 2 so these are the two main concepts you need means these are the takeaways from this question for our question number 24 it is given to us a source of sound of frequency f at point z is moving at a steady speed means steady speed means the speed is constant the pattern of emitted wave fronts is shown this is pattern of emitted wave fronts question is asking us which row describes the frequencies of the sound heard by stationary observers at x and y so we have one observer at point x so we can draw one observer here and another observer is at point y we can draw another observer at point y now the source we need to understand there are two points we need to understand from Doppler effect. If source is approaching, so the first thing we need to understand, if source is approaching observer, approaching frequency observe, approaching frequency observe will be greater than frequency of source. If source is moving away, the second point you need to understand, if source is moving away from from observer means from detector moving away from observer or moving away from detector in that case the frequency heard by observer means observed frequency that will be less than frequency of the source so these are the two points simply you need to understand now from here we need to find out is the source is moving to the left or is the source is moving to the right but if you look at the waves on the left side these waves are very close together so this is telling us the source is moving to the left and the source is moving away from y so source is moving towards x it means the frequency observed means the frequency observed by x it has to be greater than so here it is approaching if you want to write down so the source is approaching x that the source is moving away from y we can also write down moving away from y so in this case fx has to be greater than f but fy fy frequency heard by observer at y it has to be less than f so this is our simple this is how you can answer this problem frequency at x it has to be greater than f so this one is true this is also true now we need to find out the frequency of y has to be less than f so this is telling us is less than f this is telling us greater than f so this is not right so the possible answer best possible answer for this question is c because source is approaching x so these are the takeaways means what you need to understand from this question is your takeaway is this one if the source is approaching observer frequency observe is greater than fs if it is moving away observe frequency is less than frequency produced by source but another important point is that frequency of the source fs does not change it doesn't matter source is approaching or source is moving away fs does not change in next time they can ask you about this one frequency of the source does not change what is changing is the apparent frequency observed frequency so fs does not change next time in paper they can ask you about fs so be careful so these are three takeaways from this question too and this is the third one source frequency does not change for question number 25 we need to find out what is not a possible value for the wavelength of the named electromagnetic waves when it is traveling in a vacuum and this question is simply based on range of different electromagnetic waves we need to remember the range of all electromagnetic waves to answer this question first of all let's try to understand how we can remember the range of electromagnetic waves 
let me explain to you in a very simple way we will start from radio waves and radio waves they have the longest wavelength so the wavelength is greater than one meter so simply i will write down here the wavelength is greater than one meter so is greater than one meter greater than ten, one meter so it can be from one meter to 10 to two meters and so on so it is greater than one meter so simply you can remember the wavelength of radio waves is greater than one meter let's move on to next wave next one is microwave and the wavelength of the microwaves it it is from one meter to 10 to negative 3 meters so we are using unities meter after microwave the next wave is infrared and the wavelength of infrared is from 10 to negative 3 to 10 to negative 6 again the unities meters next one is visible light for visible light the wavelength is from 8 times 10 to negative 7 to 4 times 10 to negative 7 but most of the time we also remember this one it is from 400 to 400 to 800 nanometers so it is from 400 to 800 nanometers so this is also important if you can remember in nanometers and next one is uv light means this is ultraviolet light and the wavelength of ultraviolet light is from 3 times 10 to negative 7 to 10 to negative 8. Next one is x-rays. So the unit for this one is also meters. So next one is x-rays. For x-rays, this is 10 to negative 8 to 10 to negative 12. For gamma, the last one is gamma rays or gamma radiations. The range you can simply remember this is 10 to negative 12 to 10 to negative 16 and even smaller than that. So this is the range and this is how you can simply remember this one. Now let's look at given wavelength. First of all, gamma rays. So it is given 10 to negative theory. So this is in this range. So this is right. And if you look at x rays, this is 10 to negative 10 and that is in this range. So this is also right. That is possible. For infrared, it is given 10 to negative 6. So this is in this range. So this is also true. This is true. But if you look at microwave, this is given 10 to negative 5. 10 to negative 5 is in infrared range. So this is in infrared range range so this is not possible for microwave so our answer for this one is d so this is the answer 